been a hot minute since we played this. Can't get my reading voice. Inyo Mimi and werewolves may share common ancestry, archaeologists say. Lionfish invasion decrease a successful trial? Countries to block foreign entry amidst unknown livestock bacterial infection. There's something missing from the drawer, but did I misplace it? Looks like bad weather again tonight. Let's hope it doesn't bring bad tidings. I don't know. I think it's a very nice color scheme. Well, I think it's lacking something. Uh, it's too... dainty. Dainty? What would you like then? Red, black, and purple? Mm, that wouldn't be the worst. Okay then, why not? But you have to commit to it. No take backs this time. Bye. I don't know. Maybe. Let's take a break from the topic. I only have time for a quick drink before I go back to work. And it's not like we're going to decide now anyway. Maybe that's the problem. Actually, you know now that I think about it, if his name is Bailey's, then shouldn't I be reading it Bay? But it's spelled B-A-I. And I think I guess I just autofill it from saying Kai. That I think it's supposed to be like Bai. But then his name is Bailey's. I'm trolling. Maybe that's the problem. How are we supposed to plan the wedding if we keep postponing every choice we need to make? Hey barista, what do you think? Pale green, lilac, and daffodil yellow? Or red, black, and purple? They don't put barista on the spot. No, it's quite alright, it's just that I wouldn't know. This is your wedding. Your opinion is matter, not mine. Why do they both look so mad at me? They're mad because I'm not taking a side, but if I take a side, then the other person will be mad at me and there's no winning. Trouble is, we don't know what our opinions are. And when we think we do, we change our mind. It's like the centerpieces. Oh, please, can we not talk about that now? I really thought we agreed on the cute cottagecore ones. The ones you spotted on Tomodachi Hill. I mean, they were your pick in the first place. They were, but they were also too expensive. We have to be realistic. But weddings in general are expensive. Especially when you want to have 200 guests. That's a low blow. I can't just disinvite my extended family. The keyword is extended. Do you even know half of these people? That is not the issue. If I invite one of them, I have to invite them all. It's like a domino effect. Besides, they'll be paying for part of the wedding anyway. I still don't think they should. I can pull my weight. If we have to choose, I'd rather we have the beautiful things that you like. Even if it means we have fewer guests. Well, if my family's not chipping in, we might not be able to afford either. Thanks for the vote of confidence. I don't want our wedding to just be a random meal. With a bunch of people we're not even that close to. And I said I'll make sure we can afford a dream wedding. Or die trying, I don't want you to. Saved by the bell. Let's work. Ugh, really can't linger. I think I'll have that drink now, barista. Of course, what can I get you? Something that'll keep me awake. I still have work to do and my head hurts. So I guess a strong coffee would be good. And with a nice spicy kick, please. Any preference on the spicy kick? No, any strong coffee with spice will do. Here's the jingle beans for the lady. Oh, that's novel. Hmm, perfect. I can feel myself relaxing already. <laughs> what? You're weird. That thing doesn't smell relaxing to me at all. You're weird. I guess we're both weird. Oh, they're so cute. That we are. My lovely weirdo. My perfect misfit. Oh, they're so cute. I want to throw up. This is so much better. It really is. 
Have I mentioned I love your smile? Never enough. Ugh. Disgusting. I'm gonna need something real spicy to wash this down. And I'd love to serve it to you, Hyde. If Bailey doesn't want to order, that is. Hyde! Sorry, Taniri, come in. Yeah, I know. You were too busy doing whatever you were doing. Hey, Hyde. Go ahead, get yourself a drink. I can wait. I'll stick here for a while anyway until Lua properly gets off work. Alright then. Did you hear me, barista? Spicy is the name of the game. Any preference on the spice or the base? Nope, just make sure it's got a spicy kick of something and then double it. Here you go. That should be plenty of spice in this. It does smell like it. And tastes like it. Well done, barista. This is the kick that I needed. I'm glad. Alright, back to the lovebirds here. Your family troubles have sorted themselves out, yes? Still on the marriage track? Yeah, we are. We definitely are. Hmm. Not getting too bored. Not really. Turns out planning a wedding is, well, suitably entertaining. That's one way of putting it. Can't wait to be at the marriage stage of it, to be honest. Could you sound any less enthusiastic? Hey! Here they go again. Good to see that some things don't change. And such a dramatic backdrop, too. You should start serving popcorn barista. I'd be more enthusiastic if we didn't fight about it every single time. <laughs> no. I'm not engaging with this right now. I've got to go to work anyway. Right. And I'm going to have a drink. Bye, barista. Bye, Hyde. See ya. Ugh. What can I make you, Mr. Bailey's? I think something warm, sweet, and comforting, please. A hot chocolate, perhaps? Yes, chocolate with honey and milk could work. There we go. A chocobi miruku for you. Perfect. This feels so good, barista. It means a lot that you're always looking out for all of us. On a miserable night like this, it's heartwarming. But of course, you are valued customers. I hope Lua didn't get too soaked. <laughs> you do care a lot about her. Of course I do. Then why all the fighting? You tell me. This wedding is bringing out the worst in us. Since we sorted out the situation with my family? You mean... Since you cut them off? Yeah, since I stopped talking to their judgmental faces. Lua and I haven't thought about anything. Until now, every time we try to organize this thing, it's like we become different people. Hmm. Let me ask you something. Go ahead. What do you want from this wedding? How do you mean? It's not complicated. I'm just asking what you want. If you close your eyes and picture the day, what do you see? Honestly? I have no clue. I know Lua is there, but that's about it. Not a bad start in truth, but if you don't have specific expectations, why don't you just let her do what she wants? <laughs> you make it sound so easy. I want her to have what she wants. That's exactly what I've been trying to achieve. I've been picking up on everything she's liking on Tomodachil. Every wedding picture she's painting online, all the places she finds cool, all of the fashion designers that she follows. She deserves to have all that, to have a special day. But every time I make a suggestion, she won't hear it. She says it's, it's too much, too expensive, too this, too that. Is it too much, too expensive? That is not the point. I don't want her to have a shabby wedding just because I'm estranged from my family. I want her to have what she wants and what she deserves. A proper princess wedding. 
You're a remarkably presumptuous young man. Mr. Hyde. No, that's all right. I know Hyde how blew up back in the day. He's got something to say. I want to hear it. Good, because I was going to say it, whether you like it or not. You are sitting here, going on about everything Lewis should want, as if he could know what it, what's in someone else's heart. Even when you love someone? No, especially when you love someone. You should never presume to know what they need. Lua is the only one who can tell what Lua wants. But that's exactly the problem. When I ask her, she always says she doesn't know. Then give her time to figure it out. It's not going to help if you pressure her. With a thousand suggestions a minute. Or if you try to force her into some sort of princess wedding. Just to make you feel good about yourself. But what if we take so long that we reach old age and we're still not married? If you reach old age and you're still together, married or not, I think that counts as a win. And since we're talking about taking some time, you should also use that time to figure out what you want. Otherwise, the best you'll get is a wedding, based on your skewed idea of what Lua's wedding should be. That sounds pretty sad to me. Well, that wasn't pleasant to hear. Bailey's. But it also wasn't wrong. Give her time and figure out what I want, huh? Sounds so simple. Could have thought about that before, I guess. You're not bad at this tough love thing, are you, Hyde? <laughs> Perhaps I should consider a career in couples counseling. That doesn't sound nearly as much fun as modeling, doesn't it? Nothing. Modeling gets old after a while. I thought you were having a good time in LA. I was. Until I wasn't. I'm moving to Seattle, in fact. I kept my contract with the agency, just in case. But there aren't many modeling jobs to be had here. Really? What are you gonna do then? Hmm, go back to my mafia dwarf buddies, of course. Come on, I'm obviously kidding. Are you? Whew. I wouldn't go back to them. I'd go back to being chased by them. Besides, I checked in on them and everyone I used to find entertaining has retired now. Meanwhile, their grandkids manage the whole enterprise, like it's some sort of startup. Are we seriously talking about the Mafia right now? That's for me to know and for you to wonder about. Mr. Hyde likes to play a little. <laughs> Guilty as charged. I can't help it. When I see an earnest face, I have to tease it. I'll take that as a compliment. But also, what's wrong with managing things like a startup? It sounds like a pretty efficient approach, right? You young people. Impatient in business like you're impatient in love. Efficiency isn't everything. I have all the time in the world. I don't care if things are done fast. I want them done right. Maybe you should go into slow fashion. Or fine arts. If you paint with oils, that'll take some proper time. <laughs> Fine arts were the first thing I got good at a few centuries ago, but my style isn't trendy nowadays. Too much chiaroscuro lighting and putting blue in skin tones isn't novel anymore. If you're insinuating that you're Rembrandt, shh, if my mafia buddies find out, I'll be in trouble. <laughs> you're always joking around, Hyde, but for all that, you don't sugarcoat your advice. You're a pretty great listener. I hope you also have people who listen to you. I'm moving here to be closer to them. What was that? Nothing. I believe your phone's ringing. Ah, it's Lua. He's done with work for the day. Finally. In a hurry to leave here, Mr. Bailey's? <laughs> no, not at all, but I am looking forward to going home. And keeping bickering? No, I don't think so. I had an epiphany just now. Must be something in the drink. I'm gonna leave the topic alone for a little while. Good elf. Enjoy your night then. I think I will. Thanks, Hyde. 
And thanks, Barista. Of course. Have a good night, Mr. Bailey's. Mr. Hyde? What was that about the Mafia and modeling and fine arts? Are you genuinely considering a career change? All I'm considering right now is whether my car got nicked. I know old man Georgie said this area is safe, and it's a bit of a pile of junk. But it's a pile of junk with sentimental value. I sense a story. It's quite a story indeed, but I'll make it short, because it's getting pretty late. I got this car many moons ago, back when Gala was my bodyguard. I'd been stuck in Seattle for a while, working day in and day out. At some point, I decided that I needed a proper break. But, you know Gala, he's a bit of a stickler for their rules. There was no way I could have a night out in the middle of a big job, not on his watch. So you slipped his watch? <laughs> you know me well, barista. Some friends and I, we decided to get together. I was to provide the ride, and they provided the entertainment. I did the usual thing. I waited until Gala was sound asleep, and then I left a pile of pillows under the duvet, hide shaped and I snuck out of the hotel room. There was only one problem. Gala was my chauffeur as well. He had your car keys. Yep, he had my car keys. And I wasn't able to poke the bear wolf. So I went to the nearest dealership and got the cheapest car that I could find. I only intended to keep it for the night, you see. I'll spare you the details, but my friends and I, we drove to a lovely spot with a view. With a sort of action which, I admit, might appear ambiguous from the outside but to me, was very enjoyable indeed. We were right in the thick of it, when suddenly, we hear a tap on the window. Let me guess, that was Gala? The wolf himself. He peers inside, then he starts banging on the door so hard, the car is shaking. We all just kind of freeze, and then he says, How dare you kidnap Mr. Hyde? Opens the door and tosses my dates outside. Mr. Hyde you're not winding me up are you oh Barista I wish sorry it still sends me into a fit just to think about it he princess carried me out of the car if you can believe that that's a conscientious bodyguard if I ever heard of one right truly earning his yearly bonus I didn't even have the chance to explain the situation at least not until you removed my gag Gala acted like he was angry, but in reality, he was mortified. If not as mortified as my dates, whom I had to pick out of the grass. Poor Gala. <laughs> Barista, I see where your allegiance lies. Personally, I say, poor me. I never saw those lovely friends again after that fiasco. But I couldn't be angry at Gala, even then. In fact, I found his chivalry rather... charming. He didn't seem to find my antics quite as charming, though. He had woken up, hadn't found me, and was already suspecting the worst. And that was before he discovered me in a strange car in the middle of nowhere. In a compromising position. I think he was truly terrified on my account. So, he stopped talking to me for a few weeks. That doesn't sound... fair. <laughs> I suppose it wasn't. He also wouldn't give me my car keys back. I got stuck with this old thing you can see outside. And the worst of it is, if you can believe it, I decided as a great ended gesture to chauffeur him around in it. He stopped soaking really quickly after that. I suspect he wasn't a huge fan of my driving. Anyhow, I decided to keep the car in the end for whatever reason. My car collection has had some serious turnover, but this one isn't going anywhere. I must have replaced everything inside it a dozen times over, and it's very banged up, but I guess I've grown fond of it by now. We're both a little stuck in time, this car and I. You're rather more sentimental than I thought, Mr. Hyde. Sentimental, hmm? That's what you took away from the story? <laughs> but I suppose you're right. Good thing it's only us here. I can pos plausibly deny this conversation ever took place. Still, the rain has stopped and this is my cue to go, before I lose all my remaining cred. I hope the car is safe and sound. So do I. And Barista? Yes? Nah, nothing. Have a good night. Good night, Mr. Hyde. And safe journey home. 
If you like this video, be sure to like and follow for more.